The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. My thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. No Hello and welcome to Free Thought Forum. I'm Catherine Farringer, the producer of this show and your host for this program. I have with me today two gentlemen who are associated with the Peace and the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, Ron Dodson, who has been here before, and Julio Noboa Polanco. Did I do that all right, Julio? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to stick with Julio, if you don't mind. That's fine. Thank you both for coming. And we have a very exciting title here, uh, and I would like to know a little bit more about it. Our title is 500 Years of the New World Order. So, uh, Ron, I wondered if you would uh, tell us the significance. Yes, uh, I would. We're going to be talking about the uh, quincentenary or quincentennial celebration 500 years since Columbus, quote, unquote, discovered America. Uh, I wish I could take credit for this 500 years of New World Order, but actually I saw it on an advertisement for a calendar, which I intend to get a copy of, and we probably will be selling them at the uh, Esperanza Peace and Justice Center after the first of the year. And the cal calendar was put together by a political cartoonist, and it, it just showed in the advertisement the cover of it, and that's what it said, 500 years of the New World Order. And I thought this is really appropriate because it's uh, it's been 500 years of imperialism and colonialism and suppression and things of this nature, it all, it all fit in with, uh, with the beginning of, of the European expansion and then the American expansion. And I looked a little bit further and down at the bottom in the subtitle it said, uh, from Plymouth Rock to the Persian Gulf. And the, b below that it said, five centuries of kicking ass. And I said, that's what we're going to have for our time. Wow, that is wonderful, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't that great, Julio? Um, I was going to... Um, ask uh, about uh, the religious um, aspects of this thing. I'm assuming, of course, that most uh, religions are going to be all four square for this uh, celebration. Are we having some uh, dissension there? or? Definitely. There, there are several religious groups that have come out, uh, Catholic groups, Lutheran, Methodist groups as well, among others, mm -hmm. that have come out uh, with statements uh, denouncing a uh, triumphalist attitude. Hey, isn't that great? Well, Once in a while they do something <laughs> wonderful. Well, it's interesting because the official Catholic uh, hierarchy, of course, are celebrating 500 years of evangelization oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, of the Native Americans and the Indians in the New World. But uh, other Catholics and, and people of other religions uh, see and realize that actually it's been uh, an imposition. Uh, Christianity was imposed on many of these peoples at the point of the sword or many other methods yeah. and uh, certainly not something to be proud of, certain, something to, that requires a lot of thinking, a lot of reevaluation. Well, you would both be very interested in a book that I have called The Arrogance of Faith and it uh, explores Christianity and how it has been used and how the, the European attitude, of course, was that uh, they were the superior people and they had the superior culture, which they were uh, sworn and determined under God to uh, impose upon anything else. They speak of these people as heathens and whatever derogatory term, but anybody who had a culture, they never considered it. that. These people had developed their own culture, so I know you would like that that book. Good, I'm glad you mentioned. Because it. yes, it's it's a biggie, but it's it's well worth reading, and it's uh, it's done by a um, professor at uh, uh, out in Bakersfield, California, and he is a professor of history. So he has made this his uh, his uh, aim in life, just to to pursue the history of Christianity and how it's been used to divide us and to to uh, promote racism which it has indeed done very well. So, well, tell me some more about what your plans are for combating. I see you both wearing little uh, sticky things here on your coats that say something. Uh, yes, these uh, say uh, celebrate Columbus legacy, 500 years of, what is this? <laughs> Good. 500 racism, years of racism, oppression, and stolen, stolen land. land. Yes. Uh, this, this is the... Uh, what we're really doing is, in some cases, I'm not going to the extreme, we're, we're trying to give the other side of the story. 
because for 500 years, uh, for 200 years in this country, history has been distorted, and uh, we've only been able to find out what the what one side of the story was. It's all been for the good, you know. We want to show that there was a lot of a lot of losses in this land, along with the gains that that came with the uh, development of the Americas. Uh, did you read the? Did you read the article um, that Julio wrote for for the Lavos a couple mm -hmm. of months ago about? Columbus? Oh, a couple of months ago. I may, yeah. If I read it, I've forgotten it by now because I've got a memory that's not very good. Uh, but I read the most recent one. What was the other one? I'll look it up. I have. I save all my copies. I never throw them out. <laughs> well, actually, I was talking about the quincentennial challenges to the quincentennial celebration. One of the things that I discuss is that there are two other very important events that occurred in 1492. And this goes in... Oh, and bad, too, they yeah, were. Yes, oh, yes. And this goes in line with telling the other side of history. Mm -hmm. The two events were the fall of Granada and the edict of expulsion of the Jews from Spain. Mm -hmm. Now, the connection between both of these events and with the, uh, the sponsorship of Columbus's voyage is that, uh, that both of these, the, the fall of Granada and, and the expulsion of the Jews, were under the leadership of Ferdinand and Isabella, the Christian, mm -hmm. so-called yeah, Christian good kings. People. <laughs> They not only sponsored Columbus, but they also instituted the Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, we know that the um, the expulsion of the Jews was a result of the religious intolerance, uh, as well as a result of material greed. There was some material gain from all this. So uh, all of these events that occurred in 1492 are, are are related to each other because they're related to the same historical period, and and a lot of the same mentality. That, that occurred around that time caused all these things to happen. Uh, one of the things that to remember is that the Moors had a tremendous civilization in Spain. I mean, they, they had knowledge, uh, the science and, and wisdom from, from the ancient Greeks, uh, things that the Arabs themselves had produced. And uh, when uh, Granada fell, there was this cardinal named Cardinal Jimenez who had all the books that he could find, all the Arabic books mm -hmm. that were neither libraries or homes or, or institutions of learning. He had all these brought to a big plaza and put to the torch. Well, oh, that's okay. an old familiar story. That's an old familiar that's story. That. <laughs> that wasn't the first time or the last time that that happened. Christians did the same thing in the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Alexandria, exactly. And, and not, you know, in, in ancient times. But this was back, in, again, a little after 1492. Mm -hmm. And these books were in astronomy and botany and science and medicine, and, and they were all destroyed, including some of the Greek classics. Now, there was a parallel between that and what happened in the New World. Uh, Bishop Landa also destroyed the Mayan books yeah. in, in, in Yucatan, you know, after the, the conquest of, of Mexico. And basically, the, the, the conquest of Mexico and the Inquisition was used to impose Catholicism. On, on the native peoples. And there's a parallel with this uh, because the Inquisition began in Spain and what the Moors and the Jews suffered and the, and the heretical free thinkers, because it's not just Moors mm -hmm. and Jews, but anybody who, yeah, who went against yeah. the church right. also was, was, her, was a heretic and, and they, were, they were also uh, uh, you know, burnt at the stake or what have you. And so when you look at the reconquest of Spain by the Catholics, when you look at the Crusades and look at the conquest of the New World, all of these were really funded on the same mentality, the same religious intolerance, mm -hmm. and they really reflect, uh, you know, the thinking, the thinking of the time. Well, I have always maintained when you were saying that uh, when Spain threw the Jews out and the Moors had to go, and any, of course the Jews were invited to, uh, if they wanted to convert, they could exactly. stay. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, that since that time, Spain's never amounted to a great deal, and. Uh, also, uh, this uh, destroying, I, I maintain that we would be fully 1,500 years ahead in our civilization had it not been for all this, uh, this terrible behavior by the church to uh, obstruct science. Any advances were always uh, thought to be, well, it, it, it challenged their faith, didn't it? It's pretty hard when someone uh, tells you something scientific and this is what we have found out to be and then it's at odds with uh, religious belief. It doesn't, uh, doesn't work too well. There's also an economic factor that uh, the, there are 400,000 Jews that were expulsed from Spain. Either you convert or you, you have to leave. Mm -hmm. Those who left and even some who stayed, their wealth was taken away. That wealth, as well as the wealth that came from the Moors after the fall of Granada, that wealth was used to help sponsor Columbus's voyage oh, so nice. and the plunder of the New World. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, Spain did have tremendous power. 
because it wasn't uh, due to a lot of intellectual activity or learning or anything of that nature. It was due to the exploitation of the tremendous wealth that they got mm -hmm. from, from the New World and, and from the Old World. And, um, of course, they squandered this wealth afterwards because they never developed industry because mm -hmm. they were dependent so much on this, this gold and silver that was coming. And they never developed their industry. Mm -hmm. Then other nations came up and, and, and uh, eclipsed their power mm -hmm. with time. You've mentioned uh, twice uh, here, Catherine, about the Jews were allowed to, to convert if they wanted to or they were expelled. I'd like to point out that the same choice was given to the Indians by the Spanish when they, in the various islands. Uh, there was a document I, I didn't know anything about until I started looking into some of these things for this program. Uh, well, not for the program, but for after Julio mentioned we might try to do something uh, you know, different each month all the way through 1992 as a sort of an alternative to the celebration. And uh, I found out this Spanish document called The Requirement was written up, which gave the American Indians a choice of either converting and accepting God and the, the king and queen of Spain and the conquistadors, not necessarily in that order, uh, <laughs> as, their, as their masters, and then they would not be, they would not be uh, molested. They could keep their land and their families and so forth. But if they delayed in doing this, or if they fought it in any way, then they would be subject to being made slaves and families would be split up and their land would be confiscated. Now, this requirement was read to the Indians in Spanish or in Latin every time they came into a new village. They Wonderful. would round, the soldiers would round everybody up and get them into a circle, I mean, get them into a bunch, and they would mm -hmm. read this. And then now imagine the Native Americans there saying, you know, who are these people? What's this funny noise coming out of their mouth? They have yeah. no idea what they're talking what, about. Yeah, and so naturally, they're not going to do anything. You know, maybe some of them are going to try to escape. Well, then they're subject to being enslaved. So they were given a choice also, but it yeah, wasn't quite as good a choice. choice as... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't even understand the language. They didn't know they were being yeah, they given didn't, a they choice. Yeah, they didn't know the language. They had no idea what was being said. And it, uh -huh. it was mentioned in a couple of different places. Once that it was done in Spanish, and other places said it was done it read in Spanish or in, in Latin with great flourish. You know, this is a proclamation from the king and the queen of Spain. It's interesting to note that um, there were some movement uh, to try to uh, make... Queen Isabella a saint. You know, I don't know if you heard about that, but there was no, somebody who was suggesting. It, no, uh, really, I mean, and I know this may sound preposterous for anybody it, who knows no, in history. It, there's something is rattling make, back here. Really, they mm -hmm. wanted to, there was a movement to make her, declare her to be a saint. And of course, there was a tremendous response for that from the Jews, from the Moors, from, from Native well, Americans. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. oh, why? Because she was very religious and she helped spread the, 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 the word and everything like that. There was also another movement uh, uh, to uh, not very successful to beautify or whatever uh, Junipero Serra. Oh so, yes, and you know about that. Good. Oh, I do indeed. And, uh, and, and the missions that he and established in California. His statue is in our nation's capital too. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, so that may have a better chance, but both of them have come under a lot of attack. It's mm. interesting to note that the Spanish government um, has decided uh, that on March the 31st. And in 1992, they well, that Juan Carlos is going to announce a world decree, and he's going to officially cancel the edict oh. of expulsion of the Jews. Of course, it's all symbolic because the well, Spanish Constitution has already said yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's like pardoning Galileo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, the yes, poor guy's been yes, dead for after, hundreds of years. Exactly. <laughs> after 500 what? years, they're going to have this edict. To, to, you know. Oh. But uh, it's, it's interesting to note, though, how, how, how dates are, because in 1692, that is 300 years back, we had another interesting example of religious intolerance, the New Salem witch trials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were celebrating, celebrating, commemorating 300 years since the Salem witch trials in 1692. Okay. And so that's, it's interesting how these things happen. And, and, this, and, and the, the ties in terms of religious intolerance that you, that you see in both of those examples. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the religion, the churches have not been noted for their tolerance. I mean, love your neighbor as yourself and all that doesn't really seem to apply unless they believe the same thing you believe. So it's quite, quite a problem. <clears throat> well, what other, are, are you doing anything in particular at the, will there be events at the Peace and Justice Center and uh, things that I can look up in the calendar and, and attend? Well, we have a whole year. <laughs> and a, a whole year to do something. And, and then Ron and I are thinking, along with other of our members, to have uh, any number of activities, which we haven't decided yet. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be, for example, we could have a, 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 a speaker's forum. We could have a, a, a group of panelists discuss different perspectives on the quincentennial and environmentalist and Native mm -hmm. American, uh, different other perspectives on it. Um, we could also have, for example, 
uh, a show of a Native American art from from the Southwest, especially that art that speaks to their culture and their history and and, and to their struggles mm -hmm. because they've been they're still they're still struggling. Uh, these kinds of things I think would be most appropriate. We have, we we have so many different activities that we've done in the past with speakers and films and mm -hmm. forums and what Loved have you. Loved your exhibits. piece there. Loved your piece there. That was great. Thank you. Thank oh, you. that was well done. Well, we would um, we would like to have announced today, you know, some of the things that are coming up early, but. Uh, as Julio said, we haven't got them firmed up yet. We are going to have a, 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 an all-day meeting of the board of directors and, you know, sort of brainstorm this whole thing in about a week and a half from now. And so the next time we get together, we can uh, talk about specifics, but they'll, they yeah. will be publishing the calendar I'll be, with us. I'll be watching my, my paper. I think it's about time for me to renew, too. I'd want to miss I'm a little bit, uh, I think I'm a little bit more optimistic than, uh, than practical because then Julio started talking about maybe we could have a, something once a month all through the whole year following the same theme and I said well, we as much materials there is we should be able to have something every week <laughs> <laughs> however I got to thinking about that afterwards that was a little bit too ambitious I'm afraid yeah. but That's I do think that we will have uh, ongoing things I think this will be a theme that we can carry on through the whole year because there's there are going to be other things going on through the whole year I just found out recently that the, the fiesta of this year uh, I mean for 92 is going to have this Columbus thing as its um, as its theme oh. and um, they had in fact a uh, one of the papers we had a coupon. Uh, unfortunately, this was only for entry by high school students, and they're looking for a theme for the um, the uh, Fiesta Flambeau Parade. Mm -hmm. Be a celebration of the 500th anniversary of Columbus' discovery of America, and they wanted help. And so I filled out the coupon as the uh, as I would have had I been a high school student. Where down here, where it says the theme, I put down the same thing. It's on the badge: 500 years of racism, oppression, and stolen mm -hmm. land. I doubt, however, even if I had been eligible to to have sent this in, that they would have accepted that particular theme. I have, I have a feeling that you would have <laughs> met with failure. If I, I'm so used to failure, I do, <laughs> I thrive on it. <laughs> well, it should make us stronger. I mean, because after all, when you look at the Native Americans. Uh, and the struggles that they've launched uh, and what they've lost in terms of land, in terms of people, mm -hmm. in terms of civilization. And then on the other hand, what they've contributed, all the products, all the agricultural products they've given us. I mean, peanuts, chocolate, potatoes, corn, fed yeah. Europe, fed the world. Uh -huh. The spices that they developed went all the way to China and back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, and yet the irony of it is that Native Americans are among the poorest in the world and many of them are starving to death uh, in contrast to what they've contributed. And yet, they're fighting, they're struggling, they haven't given up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a tremendous lesson for us to learn in that. Of course. Oh, never give up. <laughs> <laughs> a, a great amount of the, uh, the alternative planning and programming that's going on to this sesquicentennial is among Native Americans. And I'd like to point out that when we use the term Americans, Native Americans, we're talking about South America, Latin America, Central America, all the way from mm -hmm. the, all the Arctic to the Antarctic. All the ones abused and exploited and whatnot. Yeah. And and they all have, they're all joining in. In fact, there has been a, one large gathering in um, one of the South American countries already of the celebrating 500 years of resistance, I think is what they called it. And they, and they have invited, they did invite and were attended by Native Americans from both hemispheres, uh, excuse me, from, from both North and South America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another one now, a follow-up on that that's going to be held in the United States somewhere out in the Southwest in, in 1992. And they're trying to get representatives again from all, mm -hmm. you know, as many nations as they can contact. Yeah, on uh, July of 1990, they had the first That's continental right. meeting of indigenous peoples, 500 years of Indian resistance, and they had a, a, a declaration of Quito. This was in Quito. Yeah, that Ecuador. was the one. I'd forgotten where it was, Ecuador. That's and it. they had a declaration. They had some very interesting things to say in this, in this declaration, and I, I can give you a copy of it later on. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's good because they've done, uh, they've managed to, become t to come together. That is, those from north and south and all the different tribes and nations mm -hmm. who managed to come together and, and, and forge this declaration. And they had another declaration also uh, back in October of 91 in Guatemala, Declaration of Zelahu. And I can give you a copy of that as well. Great. I'd love to have it. Thank you. I was going to say before it goes out of my mind, which things do have a tendency to waft in and waft out real quick, there's a movie I think you'd both like very much or would be interested in, I should say, because liking violence is not my bag either. But uh, 
It's called the black robe. Yes. Have you seen it? No, but I heard about it. Several people spoke to me about it, and I have seen a similar movie to that, or some. I think it's something that's called The Mission. I don't know if you've seen I The Mission. I saw that. Yes. Uh -huh. And I've, I've heard people make parallels between both of the movies, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing the robe. Well, there are similarities and there are differences. I haven't seen it either, but I talked to a woman that has seen both of them, and, yeah, and she told yeah. me about the similarities and the differences. I really want to see the black robe. I think it's going to be great. It, it don't wait too long because some of these films don't stay around very long. They That's come in out. and they go out. I wanted to see the uh, the Pope must die, and I <laughs> I said I well with a title like that I better go quickly. <laughs> and I went and I got there and I was meeting a friend mm -hmm. and I got there first and I looked up on you know how they have each theater has its uh, title up in lights mm -hmm. and I looked and it said the Pope must die it. <laughs> and so when my friend got there I said. Oh, Benny, I'm so sorry. I said, I think I've made a terrible mistake. I mean, I don't think this is the movie that I read about because it was called The Pope Must Die, and this is The Pope Must Die It. I don't get it. Well, we were there. We bought our tickets, so we went on in, and it was in big letters, The Pope Must Die. It was a comedy. It wasn't anything, a plot to assassinate the Pope or anything, but it was... But it didn't last, I bet, a week, and it was gone. So there was I a controversy suggest. about that movie, and I think that's why they changed the title. Uh huh. Uh, at least in, in terms of the uh, the announcements. Yeah. Well, the, the review I read did not have the T on the end of the uh, word. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. the, the guy that was in there was so big and fat, it wouldn't have been a bad idea if he had dieted. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, but, um, but uh, what else do you want to uh, bring up now regarding well, this? Um... Sort of as the, uh, as the devil's advocate, I guess, I would like to say that not, not everything, uh, not all of the Catholics went along with the ideas that came over from Europe. There were two specific people. I talked to <coughs> Julio about this before. There were two specific... specific That's a heck specific. of a word. I hated it. I <laughs> there cried were two priests. over it when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> one, they were both Dominicans. Uh, one was Anton Montezino, and the other one was uh, Bartolome de las Casas, um, that really spoke out against what was happening in the New mm -hmm. World. Uh, the first one, the uh, Montesino, was in, in Santo Domingo, and his statue, a huge statue of him, overlooks the harbor there today. Mm -hmm. He had a really blistering speech, which was quoted uh, quite eloquently, a portion, portions of it quoted quite eloquently in the PBS series about Columbus. I mean, he really lashed out his congregation. And of course, his congregation were all these people that had come over there to exploit the Indians. Mm. And so they reacted as one would expect. The first thing they did was try to get the church to recall him, of either course. make him apologize or else take him back to Spain. But he <laughs> held his ground and, and stayed on. Huh. And then uh, de, las, de, de las Casas, uh, was well, a totally different approach. He started out as a conquistador. He, he was, uh, in fact, he even was uh, recommending that uh, slaves be given, you know, bought by the by the uh, queen, as I understood it, and from Africa and shipped over, and twelve slaves given to each colonial colonial uh, from from Spain, and then he converted. He went to became a Dominican friar. And uh, he was became an avid historian and wrote some of the best uh, uh, histories that we have, like uh, you know, first-hand accounts of what was going on over there. He he translated some of, uh, or I don't know whether he translated or not, but he he interpreted some of uh, Columbus's journals that he had kept on the ship, and then he added his own comments about the the atrocities to the Indians. And it's become uh, one of the few first-hand accounts that we have surviving about what actually was going on over there. Mm, that's they actually started the tradition because uh, um, the, the, the last week, but the Medellas Casas was arguing that Indians do have a soul. And that was well, a big, wasn't that was that a big nice, thing. Lovely. They yes, were discussing about this. Yes, and forgot. Spain, the big controversy is, do they have a soul, do they not have a soul? If they have a soul, that means that they can be converted and that they, there's, a, there's a room for them in our hierarchy. If they don't have a soul, then you can exploit them like animals. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, his, his, his interpretation won out, but of course, after he died, other kinds of things happened. There was another person called Sahagun, who also, in Mexico, who defended the rights of the Indians, and he, uh, in fact, was like one of the first anthropologists, if you may, in a systematic way, gathered stories, mm. uh, the history of Native America. A lot of what we know about the Aztecs and the other, other uh, nations and tribes in Mexico, we know from his work. He learned Nahuatl, and he learned it well, and he was able to translate a lot of the works and transcribe a lot of the works. And he was one of the first to document and to give value to the history and the culture of, of the Indians there. The interesting thing to remember is that they started a tradition 
there's been a tradition of rebel priests, if I may call them that, yes, that yes. from that time on, mm -hmm. although they were Catholic, who nevertheless yeah. were with the poor and with the oppressed. Right. Uh, today we find that expressed in folks like uh, Leonardo Boff and the theology, uh, liberation theologians such as him. And uh, of course, we look at Mexico's history. Uh, Padre Hidalgo, who, who, who gave the cry for independence, of course, was a priest. Uh, Father Morelos, another priest, led the, the struggle for independence after he died. So, so there is a tradition in Latin America, at least, of, of revolutionary priests mm -hmm. who side with the poor and the oppressed. Well, fortunately, there have been uh, some good guys in the bad camp from time to <laughs> that's time. Right, that's which, right. And it's really uh, to our advantage that, that there be, and I know that I personally know a couple of people who they got up to preach one day and suddenly realized they, they were not believing what they were saying. But they elected to, to live with it because uh, they decided they could do more good by becoming more liberal and more, uh, uh, well, like introducing ideas to their congregations. They felt they could be more useful, but they come to some of our free Freedom from Religion <laughs> Foundation meetings, and it's kind of fun. So, uh, well, it, it's interesting because, because they do work, and, and, and it's, it's difficult to people who are not educated who can barely read, mm -hmm. it's difficult to extricate them from their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. So what the Theology Liberation folks have done is that they've reinterpreted uh, the gospel mm -hmm. so that, so that the, the poor and the oppressed are given a, a whole new lease on life. And Leonardo Boff in particular has been silenced by the church. Uh, he was just silenced last year and, 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 and several years back. So uh, <laughs> that gives you an indication. Anybody whose writings are banned is something that yeah. you must be saying something pretty significant. Oh, yeah, yes, they must be doing something, right? <laughs> yes, isn't that wonderful? Well, we have several uh, too of the uh, other of other faiths that are are standing firm for things they believe in that are the advancements. Uh, and their churches, of course, have said, uh, "Who is the, the Spong Bishop? Spong is it uh, the one that raised such cane with the Episcopal?" Uh, uh, whatever they call their meetings when they all gather together and decide what policies will be and things like that. And oh, he's written a fabulous book too. I understand it really. <laughs> I've got to get my hands on. <laughs> so, well, are there any last minute little things because we're sort of running down here, okay. believe it or not, half an hour is almost up. So are there any I couple of I told Julio we wouldn't have time to cover all this. We'd like to come back again and, and oh, go on anytime, the second chapter. Anytime, and uh, I feel like I belong again. I have a wonderful coordinator and uh, I'm not an orphan anymore so uh, I would certainly love for you both to come back and we will Appreciate talk that. a number of times during this coming year when Thank everybody you. else I'd, is whooping it up. If, if there is any any time I would like to say that, that we aren't you know totally against the idea of, of Columbus having come over here uh, my opinion is that if it wasn't him, somebody else would have been over here within oh, a few yeah. years. He's I, not the per villain himself. Greed I, I don't is a driving, totally, a driving force. Yeah, I don't right? want to get this thing totally <laughs> yes. the, to, uh, yeah. us against them. Yeah, you know, no, we're not anti-Columbus. It's, it's balance and We, we want the, and the history of the, of the whole thing the last 500 years balanced out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's happening. I mean, there are a lot of organizations involved in this. Julio and I both are accumulating lists of, of uh, alternative organizations where we can get more information. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's going to be some good come out of this, and that is, if nothing else, a lot of people are going to find out what history is really about as opposed to the way it's been taught for all of these years. Yes. I learned, unfortunately, a lot of things I had to unlearn when I started reading on my own and exploring other avenues. I found that it was not all the way it was taught in school. Yeah, I think it was uh, Einstein. So, well, that. we have to wrap for now, okay. and it's goodbye from Free Thought Forum. Hope you'll tune in next week. And thank you both for coming. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to duke or dictator. No person can deny, Deacon Duncan Sin Fry. No person can deny. Die Gedanken sind frei.
take me 